So on this channel lately, we've been talking a lot about Jordan Peterson. And if you're one of the newer subscribers to this channel, you have probably watched my two videos on Jordan Peterson over the last two weeks. I made one about two and a bit weeks ago about his own fans turning on him and how he has fallen from grace as this, I guess people thought of him as like a more centrist type to go in a bit mask off and then signing up with the Daily Wire Plus to host some of their shows. And honestly, the content he's putting out for them is frankly bizarre. And we're going to get into it in this video. But basically after that video and because FD Signifier had done some similar content, but obviously in a way, I guess, more researched and polished format in his video essays, also talked about Jordan Peterson in terms of the Manosphere. And he was kind enough to have me on his stream um, nearly two weeks ago now. And if you guys are curious, he has uploaded... 40 minutes of that stream to his second channel and that is called signified b-sides and i'm going to stick all these links in my description and honestly if you haven't heard or watched any of this guy's content it's really really good and if you were going to transition from i guess watching my content specifically on like jordan peterson or maybe even some Gary V stuff, I would really recommend these two videos. So dissecting the Manosphere and connecting the Manosphere. And of course, it's a big contrast of my own content where I would say it's research, but my content isn't scripted. I never read off a script. And I obviously upload pretty frequently, but FD Signifier is one of these leftist content creators who puts far more research and work into each video. So yeah, massive shout out for him having me on. And please, please go sub to his channel. I should actually have his channel name tagged in the title so you can just click that. So yeah, we had a really, really good conversation. And what I'm going to do for this video is I'm going to segment it into kind of like topics so you guys can easily browse through on the timestamps if you want. And generally, we just talked about everything to do with Jordan Peterson, his rise, his fall, how people have turned on him, why he's acting so irrational right now. And I think something I also do, which uh, FT Signify did a tiny bit with the edited version, is I'm going to add some of the clips in of stuff we were actually referencing. So yeah, all of that out the way, please enjoy our conversation. If you've come over from FD's channel, know that I really, really appreciate the support. I hope you've enjoyed the content so far. Obviously, I'm not going to show you anything new of this video. If, if you've watched the interview already, you've watched what I'm going to show you. But for my own followers, a lot of you probably don't even know I went on his channel in the first place. I know we do have a fairly, I guess, large crossover between our subscriber bases, but please enjoy this conversation. It's something I really enjoyed. And yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thanks so much for the support recently. Thanks so much for the 80,000 subscribers. Let's go onward to 100K before the end of the year. And this is going to conclude my recent Jordan Peterson content. I'm open to making more videos on him, but free in under three weeks. I think it's time to move on unless he does something really noteworthy so yeah enjoy the conclusion to my jordan peterson trilogy just me and fd signifier talking about everything to do with jordan peterson i think i've always been quite hostile to jordan peterson because the notion that like from my experience you know four years in university that it's run or overrun by marxists is like because because in my experience I had one marxist professor absolutely amazing guy like uh, i really loved him uh, but most of them very old liberal types. And as you can see with the, the disconnect between liberalism in the UK, it's also very transphobic um, liberalism. It's more like this conservative liberalism. Mm -hmm. um, and that was my experience for most people in, in university. And the Marxist society, which I thought was a joke as well, and I say this in the John Peterson video I just made, no one took them seriously. Like yeah. no students took them seriously. It was really, really small. People just like troll them. And this is about, you know, like 2015, 2016. Yeah. Uh, and like the idea that like, we're all being brainwashed into accepting transgender rights or you know socialism or anything like that especially in the uk where university is extremely like class focused in terms of like the institutions have always been designed for very wealthy people and powerful people and the people who run these institutions are like the same people who go to like the top universities i always find it like extremely laughable so that's why i always never liked him despite being more liberal when i was a bit younger where i consider myself you know far far leftist now and stuff so i never liked him and i'm happy i can watch videos back and be like 
I never fell for him. And which is also important is that I was kind of into like, not the intellectual dark web, but the new atheism side because mm-hmm. I was raised um, raised Catholic and not I didn't have a bad upbringing. Like it was fairly progressive Catholic, but it always attracted me when I was younger to Sam Harris, Richard Dawkins, the people who were pushing back against Christianity. I only switched when they started like, basically racializing Islam. And I realized like- <laughs> When they started they, showing their hand as well. Yeah, they're all Western chauvinists. And then Jordan Peterson, that's why he fits nicely into that. Not because he's an atheist. He talks about atheism being the worst thing ever. Like he fits into like a very Western chauvinist worldview. But so I went to an HBCU, which in the States means historically black college university, which means these are colleges birthed from, um, you know, black political traditions. Now there's still, you know, there's a lot of stuff there, a lot of liberalism, a lot of black excellence uh, in there still. But overall, like my school was founded by W.E.B. Du Bois. Um, and by the way, everybody, it's Du Bois. I say that every, I've said every time, no shade oh. to anybody. I've just heard it. I heard so many people say Du Bois and a couple even try to correct me. It's <laughs> Du Bois. So this is this is a school founded by Du Bois. I didn't have any Marxist professors. I didn't yeah. learn much about Marxism in undergrad. Then I went to grad school in sociology and I definitely, you know, started to encounter socialists, um, you know, frames of, of seeing the world. Uh, but I wasn't radicalized. I still came out of half. I got through half of grad school still being pretty liberal. You know, yeah. I, I was probably, you know, brought further left by contrapoints. You know what I'm saying? And um, and the, the experience of like not voting for Bernie Sanders and being like, OK, I fucked up there, maybe. Um, yeah. And so like to hit for him to come and say, and it's not even dog whistles, it's like dog alarms. Um, at this point, but no, not even at this point, like from it's jump, been. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's been dog been. alarms. If you are yeah. not within that, you know, Western chauvinistic tradition, then you hear him say, you hear how he talks about immigration. You hear how he, t- you are, hear how he denigrates African-American studies, like casually, you hear the crowd clap. You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I, I see what's going on here. Yeah. Um, also, I think you're referring to the clip I showed in the video. Yes, yeah. I said already, women's studies and all the ethnic studies and racial studies groups, man, those things have to go. And the faster they go, the better. They should never be put. <laughs> it would have been better had they never been part of the university to begin with, as far as I can tell. But um, because I, I know, because watching your video on like the manosphere, the two part stuff, you talked about the sociology and like uh, like Gramsci and everything like that. The term hegemony is a really significant term in the world of critical theory and comes from Italian Marxist philosopher Antonio Gramsci and is basically a concept that explains how society and culture and the state dominates the frameworks through which we understand and see the world and also how we expect the world and society to work, look and function. And it's very funny that everything he lists is basically something that is very associated with the Frankfurt School, like women's studies, right. uh, like critical theory, critical race theory, all these things associated from the Frankfurt School. And it's obviously going off in my head. This guy either is really anti-Semitic or he's just so naive that he thinks you can take a conspiracy theory that is fundamentally anti-Semitic. Give me like the Frankfurt okay. School um, conspiracy theory like framework. Okay, so to go back, because if I just say it, you would just think, oh, people just hate leftists. But we have to go back to like post Bolshevik revolution, uh, like Russia and Germany. So a lot of a lot of white Russians uh, immigrated to Germany after they were overthrown, and they brought with them basically we've been overthrown by the Jews um, because a lot of Jews were more progressive in Russia because they'd been historically oppressed. Uh, Trotsky was Jewish, Karl Marx was ethnically Jewish, all this stuff. So they believed it was uh, the Jewish conspiracy to take over the world, outlined in obviously the protocols of the elders of Zion, that you know fake text about how the Jews are going to take old, over the world. Good old the classics, the classic <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, and then that became a big part of Nazi Germany propaganda, Judeo-Bolshevism. Communism is a tool for the Jews to take over the world and dis- fundamentally destroy Western civilization. And then in terms of the cultural Marxism, what changes is the Frankfurt School were a bunch of Marxist philosoph- philosophers who fled Germany, came to America and just continued their work. And like you, you outlined a lot of it in one of your videos, like sociology is a big one, critical theory, right. critical race theory, um, liberalization of like sex and stuff like that. And to a lot of Americans, it was quite you know part of that like cultural revolution in the 60s. Yeah. And, and the thing is, a lot of Americans didn't even realize, you know, they weren't directly influenced by the Frankfurt School going out and be like, oh, because this guy said this, I'm doing this. But it went very much in line with the ideas. And then about the 1990s, uh, William Lind and I think like Jerry Fowler and some people involved in like the Heritage Foundation, they wrote this article about cultural Marxism, basically like a broad brush that 
uh, the legacy of the Frankfurt School was Marxists are now infiltrating everywhere to undermine Western civilization. Yeah. And then Jordan Peterson essentially mainstreamed this, where loads yeah. of people now say it like it's not a big deal. Like yeah. it doesn't have a history of being insanely anti-Semitic. It's not very similar to Judeo-Bolshevism. The only difference Jordan Peterson is he's obviously like he blames the Marxists, but he seems to blend 1960s and 70s like postmodernism in with Marxism. And he doesn't accept that any Marxists have ever been critical of the Soviet Union. So um, you have like Sartre yeah. in the 60s, critical of the Soviet Union, still communist, Japanese Communist Party in the 80s, massively critical of the Soviet Union. Um, he doesn't seem to understand that because for, quite frankly, I don't think he's ever read anything about Marxism. And, and I don't think and I don't think he cares. I think he knows the thing that I, that's been. So there's several things that have been popping in my head with this that I'm kind of percolating for, you know, future content is it's very clear that being anti woke is a really like, like, like easy framework for brand development and, and grifting money. Yep. Um, Dave Chappelle is doing it right now. Um, uh, Kevin Samuels, who I've talked about. And I'm going to talk about in this future video, same thing. And then Peterson, who came to power, not power, but prominence, um, after his, you know, anti-trans sentiment uh, comments years ago, yeah. it's just very clear that as long as you are anti-woke, you don't have to even know, you don't have to have any useful, like, critique of the left or uh, progressive movements or anything. As long as you are clearly against it, and you can uh, you can affirm my sense to be against it. But what makes Peterson so interesting is because, like you said, he was mainstream, which is to me the scariest and most upsetting thing about it because it wasn't just so there's, there's many reasons why he's mainstream but i think the key is just how irresponsible you know our our news media apparatus is but it's just that they're just chasing i eyes and they say hey here's this really controversial figure that's that yeah. sounds good when he talks that will bring an audience so let's bring him in here and he gets up there and he's you know sargon of akkad with a, with a degree um he's on nbc you know what i'm saying or whatever the nbc equivalent is in the uk um, everything on everything so so bringing it back to those centrists so i i i don't usually I, I engage with my comments but i don't usually engage with like my response videos but i saw one from a guy um that i thought well, so i didn't you know i didn't i was like okay this is the response i expected but that was like, but then like the day after I saw the video was when he had his Elliot Page freak out moment. And then like a week later, it was the video that he made uh, up yours, woke moralist. I'm not taking down that tweet or acknowledging that my tweet violated the Twitter rules. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. Twitter's a rat hole in the final analysis. And I have probably contributed to that while trying to use, understand, and master that horrible, toxic platform. No doubt, I owe some apologies for that, and I'm trying to learn, but it's a relief, in some real sense, to be banned. And I'm just curious, and so I came back, I'm like, what do you think of this? <laughs> and he made a video where it was somewhat, it was somewhat clear that he wasn't okay with the explicitly far right turn that Peterson was taking. But it did make me very curious as to like, what is the moderate Jordan Peterson fan before like the last month, right? Yeah. Like, what does that look like? Like, do you know any people who are fans of him? Oh, no, no. <laughs> I think I, I, I'm not friends with them. I know a few though, like people that might be like adjacent to your circle. I'd say, I think the thing with Peterson, it's quite complex. I actually brought up this cultural Marxism to a Peterson fan, just randomly saw this guy at the pub. Didn't really want to talk to him, but we just got into it. And he didn't know what I was talking about. Like, literally did not know what I was talking about. He didn't know he ever said any of this. Um, because Peterson has, and I think it was interesting in the end of my video, it had a guy who was a fan saying he has multiple personas. And the guy that I was talking to had basically only listened to his self-help stuff, which mm -hmm. is like and stuff because he basically, he rejects systemic factors of anything. And it's all a personal responsibility thing, despite the fact he couldn't personally deal with his own addiction, like many people couldn't, and, you know, still giving this advice. But then people just take it from that. And then you have... The American side a bit more, I think, where they take the politics of it and like, oh, debunks, you know, woke feminists and all this stuff. I think right. I think there's a there's a I don't know I don't know how they can rationalize it, but I think a lot of people get into him for one reason and then stay for another reason. 
Mm. Or maybe they just get into him and they like they see certain parts of him that they like and they'll stick with him and they'll ignore the parts that they don't like. Basically, like cherry pick him. And because he's wrote he's wrote so much and he's spoke so much, right. you can you can kind of do that if yeah. you want. I mean, like you have to be like kind of bad person politically if, <laughs> if you do if you do that. I'm not gonna lie, but at right. the same time, if you want, you can ignore some of it. And I think that's where the centrist Peterson fan before the Daily Wire. But then it's like, oh, he's joined the Daily Wire literally he's just being paid for writing propaganda now like that i cannot ignore this any anymore because i could just before i could take the philosophy and now i can't because he's literally just becoming a talking head like ben shapiro or anyone right. else especially on the right with peterson fans and other figures it's it's so they have such a pull so peterson obviously has his biggest fan base is with young white men who are despondent for whatever reason maybe it's addiction maybe it's you know uh mental illness, just feeling socially ostracized, et cetera. And what Peterson gives you is a powerful figure to superimpose yourself on. Yeah. And so it, it stops being about what he says and about being what he is to you, which is why so many of them are bending over backwards who make sense of the word salad. Like he's been doing word salad. But it's it's even salient er <laughs> recently. Yeah, I guess to 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 pull people to, to up to speed because we've been talking about a lot of his nonsense. Can we can we can you help me go through like the last I guess a month? So he joined the Daily Wire, yeah. and then he had the weird tweet about the uh, plus size model. Yeah, and then he had the tweet with um, Elliot uh, Elliot. Uh, What's his name? Elliot. What's Elliot's Elliot, name? Elliot Page. Elliot Page. But dead name in them. Just De dead name in Elliot trying Page. To get, trying to get banned off Twitter, basically. Basically, basically. As it, it seems to me like very clear, like I need to create an anti woke, you know, branding wave around my content so that I can, you know, yeah. do whatever. And yeah. so, what happened from there? Because you all, because there's there's the video about Elliot Page, then also the 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 Muslim video, the Ukraine video. And there may be one yeah. more, but they're all they're all equally insane. So, like, take take us from there. Like, obviously, he's had a lot of health problems, and I don't want to say that the health problems have caused him to be worse than he is because I've always thought he's bad. That was the point of the video on on Friday. I've always thought he's the same, but I think he's become a bit of an egomaniac. And the way he's been talking about these issues, it, it's just you can come at it at so many different uh, like levels to how he's so wrong. So the Ukraine one, I know I pissed some people off with what I said about it, but let's say his fan base turned on him for Ukraine. Because he's essentially saying Russia did it and it's the West's fault for being woke. Like that, that is the heart of his argument, right? And are we degenerate in a profoundly threatening manner? I think the answer to that may well be yes. The idea that we are ensconced in a culture war has become a rhetorical commonplace. How serious is that war? Is it serious enough to increase the probability that Russia, say, will be motivated to invade and potentially incapacitate Ukraine merely to keep the pathological West out of that country, which is a key part of the historically Russian sphere of influence. The culture war in the West is real and culture is losing. And the culture war is now truly part of why we have a war. And it's a real war. And it is certainly the case that we do not, therefore, have all the moral high ground. Totally ridiculous. And and you don't you don't have to be left wing to agree that. So I said people get mad at me because I said, why would he invade Ukraine for being woke when you know they banned communism and you know they have a tolerance for the tolerance Nazis, of Nazis, yeah. Yeah. And, and I was like, why would they how is that a woke country at all? Um, but then even if you, you don't agree with me saying that, you can say that like you know, it's just a ridiculous justification when there's so many other reasons, like very complex reasons. Like I said in the video, um, Putin's own ideology on Ukraine. Right. Putin being basically a dictator at this point because he's yeah. been in, what, like 15 years? I oh, know, I think it's 2000 he got in. So God, 20, 22 years. But then it, you have other stuff like historically the break of the Soviet Union and, you know, the, the West's influence in that area, including on Russia. Um, and then for him to come out and try and put on a Western culture war in a place where no one would know what the f you're talking about if you even brought it up, <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. But it, but like the thing is, I can't even believe that the people at the Daily Wire 
like understand that as much as they are kind of trying to back Russia and because obviously Biden is siding with Ukraine and they just hate Biden. If it was Trump, I think they'd be okay with it. Right. Um, I, th I think they must know in some way. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And even like you were saying with the Muslim video. It Muslims. Reach across the sectarian divide. Shiites. Find a Sunni pen pal. Communicate with someone on the other side. Sunnis, do the same. Is there someone in the Muslim world willing to build an electronic system to bring people from the Sunni and Shiite community together? A place where people of goodwill could reach electronically across the divide, person to person, and to formulate the kinds of personal, trusting friendships upon which a lasting peace truly might be founded? It's like, are you going to simplify? Like, I think there is a tendency in the West to um, make Islamic sects like a monolith, like right. Shia and Sunni, right. they hate each other and kill each other all the time. It's not strictly it's true. Not, there, yeah, are, not. <laughs> yeah, there, 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 there are countries where both of these, and, and, and Iraq at the moment has its sectarian problems, but there are places where these two groups coexist. So it's not like, I don't know, the heart of Belfast in 1990s Northern Ireland where like everyone hates each other. It's literally right. like there are countries where both these groups exist. Like that goes to the Quran. That goes to the yeah. death of Muhammad. So we're talking like thousands of years and Jordan Peterson's like, I have a message for Muslims. <laughs> <laughs> It's, 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 yeah, it, it's the most bizarre thing as well, because it's like, it's because I've been reading, well, I've done a bit about Islam, but I've been reading a book about medieval history, and it really breaks down the split between them. And it's so, like, ideological and deep. It's like, oh, like, the Shia think it should be, like, descendants of Ali and Muhammad should rule Islam. The Umayyad Caliphate believe it should be the tribal group that Muhammad was affiliated should rule Islam. Right. And it's actually like, they've been fighting over this. Um, even when they're at the height of their power, literally for a thousand years, and then suddenly Jordan Pearson comes along, tell, you know, a white Canadian, you know, oh, shit. A white Canadian like, Christian. <laughs> like, you guys should just get along. Like, <laughs> well, we get along in Christianity. <laughs> it's, it's just ridiculous. It's for Peterson to make that video, the Ukraine video, and then, of course, the, the, uh, the Elliot Page video, which was just like, to me, that was, I think that was the one that hurt the most for the Jordan Peterson centrist because it killed their narrative. So it was interesting. They broke down Peterson into three factors, kind of like how you said. It's the self-help stuff, the religious stuff, and the political stuff. Yeah. And like, I think you're right that some people will like one of the three, maybe two of the three, and stay away from the third, whichever one that is. Um, but Peterson is blending all of them more and more now so that you yeah. kind of can't like, you can't touch the self-help stuff lately without thinking about the political stuff because they directly conflict with each other and so as these centrists try to hold on to this like deification of peterson the elliot page uh nonsense was like a, a real it was i've heard some of them clearly say i'm kind of like distancing myself and i saw that i've been perusing that um reddit as well <laughs> a lot of there was a lot of cope and and, and hate on the Reddit because it's like, yo, it's clear this guy's just another right wing windbag at this yeah. point and it has been. And like, if we're honest, this is what the leftist has been saying for four or five years at this point. Who, and who likes to lose to leftists? Nobody likes <laughs> to lose to us. You know what I'm saying? Nobody likes to say that we're right. But when you have that video that he did where he continues to dead name, where he acts like he doesn't understand what terms of services are on Twitter, yeah. Um, where he clearly shows that he is against Elliot's transness, right? Yeah. It's not just, oh, I think you're whatever. He compares Elliot's transness being acceptable to going to hell in a handbasket or whatever he says, yeah. some old, you know, old Kajari, uh <laughs> dirty words um from jo from uncle from your racist uncle jo uh, jordan um and so it's like to me that was just really surreal and i couldn't imagine i couldn't imagine i guess it's like i don't know it's not really like me and kanye but like that's the only thing i can compare it to personally is watching a person that you really identified with become explicitly ridiculous and unserious before your very eyes yeah. um especially if you've been defending this particular thing about them for years now yeah and he's like nope sorry was a transphobe the whole time mask off you know what i'm saying like yeah. well because because the the 
the way he used to rationalize it with that C16 bill was basically, yeah, but I mean, it's always evident because the C16 bill was basically you added transgender rights to the human rights bill in Canada. And I only found out today that in Ontario, where he's from, it literally been the law for like five years before he made his video. Really? So it's clear like you can, you can, he framed it in the language of totalitarian. Like it, 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 we're going to, Left is going to put you in gulags if you don't say people's pronouns. That's essentially like what he was working with back in the day. And it, it sounded insane. Like, I, I, I will say like there could be a whole host of things. He seems like a guy who's insanely paranoid. He has Soviet art all over his walls in his home. He apparently talks about it. that. That seems absolutely bizarre to me because he says he likes to remind himself that the Soviet Union could happen like again. And it is weird. Like uh, now, like it's like, OK, if you thought the Soviet Union was so terrible, I'm sure you you could draw parallels between Soviet actions, I don't know, in certain countries and what they're doing in like what Russia are doing today in Ukraine. Um, but apparently now it's OK. Like, I'm sure if I ask you, what do you think about the Soviet um, intervention in Afghanistan or like Hungary or Czechoslovakia, you condemn it. But when there's a bigger invasion in Ukraine done by a capitalist authoritarian Russia, then suddenly, oh, it's actually the West fault now. It's, it's, yeah, it's... But then that's what I mean, incons inconsistent, paranoid. And he's had really bad health problems. He was put into a medically, for people who don't know, medically induced coma against all medical advice, which ironically he had to get done in Russia because the only country that would do it. And yeah. it's like that was against everyone's like advice, medical advice. And he seems to have gotten, like I point out in my video, so much more, I'd say, venomous and paranoid and just angry and i think there was that element there always but he was smart enough to know to appeal to you know more broadly you've got to come across as civil like you can't come across mm. as debunking someone with like facts logic and calmness not angrily ranting in the video and acting like you don't understand anything because because at the end of the day you think has this man lost some of his like critical thinking skills or just lost some of his i don't know anything because he does even I can admit, as someone who believes he has the same ideology as before, he does not seem like the same person. Like, yeah. and, and lots of his fans have been saying, like, he does not seem it. And you might have been tricked by the facade of calm centrist, but you know, at the end of the day, I think that's what woken a lot of people up. It's like you're so angry about this, and you're not even pretending it's about free speech or anything. You're just like, I inherently do not agree with people being transgender, and I don't yeah. want them to transition. Is what he said recently to Karl Kalinsky as well. It's the most good faith you could possibly have to hear how Jordan Peterson has talked about trans people from jump, but also yeah. recently to say, this is because he just doesn't want people to transition. The argument that a lot of turfs and these, you know, these guys are doing is, well, if, if people, what that there's children that are transitioning that are going to regret it when they get older, which I, I'm sure that I'm sure that's a thing that maybe exists in some cases. I've, I've seen the cherry pick stories, but as a whole, it's very rare as yeah. transness is in general. Um, so to use that and to jump all the way to trans people should not exist. What is that but transphobic? And and, and I, I know you can't answer this perfectly. I'm good. This is like, I guess, my next like idea to play with that have turned into a video by the end of the year is yeah. these Jordan Peterson centrists. To me, what they really want and I said this so much in the, uh, to an extent in the Manister video, because this is what I wanted when I was a liberal, is I wanted to think that the world as I had experienced it up until that point in the handful of privileges I had was still righteous in its existence. That people that came to say the world is really up from my perspective, that I need something or someone to let me know. No, that person's just ridiculous. That person's perspective is skewed. That person's ideas are wrong and harmful. And really, they just want to destroy, you know, Western civilization because they're postmodern yeah. Marxists. The thing that I, that's interesting to see is the handful of centrists that are probably realizing it. The, the, you know, because because here's the bottom line: you you, you can come on. I know that's what y'all about to do because that's what the new that's what half the new atheists did. Yeah. You got to a point where you couldn't reconcile your internal morality with the bullshit that you were hearing, and then you watched the ContraPoints or Philosophy 2. <laughs> well, it's like, uh, my favorite comment, um, it's kind of like related to Jordan Peterson, but we, 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 if we're looking at the future of Jordan Peterson fans, my favorite comment about new atheism was, if you were an atheist when you were 20, you're either now a skull measurer or you're a communist. And it's like, <laughs> that's the two paths outlined. Yeah. Like, 
you either realize that new atheism is western chauvinism and despite rejecting the power of religion it's not rejecting how religion has been able to influence us through mainly capitalism but you know other mechanisms as well and then right. you know if you're someone like me yeah and you feel like leftism and atheism is really compatible because you're challenging like capitalist power structures which include organized religion you become communist marxist leftist but if you're someone who's in it for we are better than those backwards muslims don't let them come here then you go the other way and then you're like oh john peterson he sounds right actually because he's talking about the western tradition and we shouldn't accept trans people muslims or you know all these different things or critical race theory and it's like with john peterson i think the time well it hasn't come already it's come now for these maybe younger fans well you know i got into his self-help books they really really helped me but now i realize most of the political sh that he's saying is so damaging i've got to like abandon him and move away from him so hopefully over the last couple of years a lot of that has happened but then you're, the other ones were like i actually liked all the anti-communism and like thinly veiled anti-semitism about like the west and stuff yeah, that was I'm, my gonna favorite go, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go on him with this journey in the daily wire and just you know i'll be further radicalized because now i'm in you know the social media ecosystem of ben shapiro and then hopefully yeah but with peterson you'd like you were saying that elliot page video and, and the comments it's like it, it's it's just not even pretending anymore like yeah. it, any 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 pretense of this is about free speech and libertarianism is gone because it's like literally like i want the state to enforce you know that people <laughs> cannot transition now and, and that's it so i'm hoping i'm hoping people wake up and maybe i'm naive hopefully maybe they'll come i mean it, outside, but who knows? It, it'll, it'll you know there, there's only there's a handful of joys you can get in life like i'm always i'm, I'm that's why I like people they want me to be more of a uh a bulldog against certain people or certain ideologies. And I'm like, I really want to make this Nicki Minaj video because you got to find joy where you can. Yeah. Um, sure. And so that's, that's what, that's what I'm telling people. Like the, the, you know, we'll, 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 we'll fight to survive. You know, we'll make the sacrifices that may have to be made when, the, when that time comes, but in between time, you know, dunk on some Jordan Peterson fans <laughs> this weekend.